So we, we must learn. You see, in, with God, we must understand the rule. The Bible says, no man is crowned except is tried lawfully. There's a rule, there's a law, a principle for receiving from God. Second, uh, uh, Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 5. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. It says, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is not crowned except what? He strive lawfully. So we must understand the law. The law is the principle for crowning. The, it's our month of crowning with more and more of God's goodness. So if we don't play according to the rule, the law, then we cannot receive the crown. And one of the disqualifying things here is this unbelief. And God wants us to see what it is so we can take care of it. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 16, I mean verse 18 to 19, look at what the Bible says here. I'm teaching and I'm preaching because we want you to I want you to receive. The Holy Spirit wants you to receive. The Holy Spirit wants us to receive the goodness of God. Amen. God has proposed it. His hand is straight forward, but it can be dishonored. It can be short-circuited. It can be hindered. You know, it can be turned back because of unbelief. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18 to 19, To whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them what? That believe not. Those who believe not cannot enter. So verse 19 even says it clearly. So we see that what they could not enter in. Why? Because of unbelief. They could not experience the goodness. They could not see the performance of God's goodness in their life because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. God is a faith God. God is a faith. God has said, look, the rule. Every game has a rule. Life is like a game. But this game of life with God has a rule. That's why many people are wondering, where is God? What is God doing? If you will not believe, you know, it's a he that cometh to God must believe. It's a must. It's not optional. Belief is a must. It's not uh, something that is uh, debatable. It's a requirement. It's a principal requirement. The Bible says, he that Hebrews 11 verse 6, he that cometh to God must believe that God is exists. God will do what he says he will do. And he's a rewarder of them who will diligently seek him based on their belief. May you be a believer. Amen. I say may you be a believer Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, he that cometh to God must believe uh, that he is. Must believe. Must. Say believe is a must. Believe is a must. I think he says, without faith, what it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to relate with God without faith. Yes. So anything with God requires faith. So faith is very vital in our Christian work for anybody that wants to get anything with God. And when people say, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't uh, believe, I can't receive, I can't understand what this is, then you can't really work with God. Yeah, because without faith, it is impossible to receive anything from God. Amen. In fact, belief is what activates the performance of God's goodness or the, the plans of God. Amen. Luke 1 45, it says, Blessed is she or he that believe, for what there shall be a performance of those things which are told her from the Lord. So, for the things or the promise of God to be revealed, to be made manifest in our lives, we must believe. I said we must believe. Amen. Yeah, we must believe. So we must understand what unbelief is and try to avoid it, get rid of it, eliminate it like a plague in our life. But we must believe. In Isaiah 7 verse 9, the big part says, If you will not believe, you shall not be established. Surely, if you will not believe, you shall not be established. So, you know, you can't, you, as a child of God, you might not say, you should never say, I can't believe that. Or that is impossible. Or that cannot happen. No, 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 no. You have to believe it. Every promise of God, because the promise of God are fantastic. God said he will crown the year for you with his goodness. Amen. There are many circumstances, conditions, and situations or trials of your life that will want to make you think it is not possible. But, to him that believeth, what all things are possible. So you must believe. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. So the rule is believing. Now, what are some of the causes of unbelief? What are the things that cause unbelief that makes people crosses? C A U S E. Right? What are the things that, you know, some of the reasons, all right, 
for unbelief. Number one, are you here? Yes, sir. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. Yeah. We want to, we want to be able to treat these uh, reasons for unbelief so that when you see those reasons in your life, you can say, hey, this is the one that's trying to keep me out. I refuse to be kept out of God's goodness. Number one primary cause of unbelief is lack of knowledge of the promise of God. Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Some people don't know what God's will is or what God's plan is. So, of course, faith is born out of knowledge. Yes, you cannot believe beyond your level of knowledge. You cannot believe something you don't even know exists. That's why the promise of God comes to announce to us that God crowns the year with his goodness. Amen. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. He, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of the truth or the promises of God. He said, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. You know? Yeah. So, if there is lack of knowledge, people cannot believe. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lack of knowledge. You don't know. The Bible also says in uh, Psalm 82 verse 5, it says, They know not, neither do they understand. So they walk on in darkness. They walk on in doubt and unbelief. Because they don't know. Because they don't know. You know, there's some people say, what you don't know cannot hurt you. What you don't know can hurt you. Because if you don't know the plan of God, many people are, who can't believe God because they don't know His will. That's why God gave us pastors uh, to to feed us with knowledge. One of the essential responsibility of a pastor is to feed the people with knowledge. Jeremiah 3 verse 15, he said, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with what knowledge and understanding. Because as you are being fed right now, your faith is being built up because faith comes out. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you have to keep hearing the word of God in order for your faith to come alive. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. So the pastor is to feed you with knowledge so that he can starve your doubts to death. Mm -hmm. So that's why we proclaim God's word. We preach God's word so that faith can come. Amen. And when faith comes, then you are ready to receive. Yes, God manifests his word through preaching. Amen. Through preaching. Titus chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, God, in due times, he has manifested his word through preaching. Through preaching. Through preaching. So the preaching is to help you to believe. Like when we come to proclaim, hey, hey, God's going to crown this year for you with his goodness. Amen. You have to believe it. Yes, that means you have to accept it. Amen. You have to receive it. You know, then you can begin to act or, you know, live your life based on the revelation of that truth. Amen. God manifests his word through preaching. Through preaching. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 24, we're looking at the first reason for unbelief, lack of knowledge. So if you don't even hear preaching, you can, you'll be a very big unbeliever. <laughs> big unbeliever, I beg your pardon. Yeah, so the people who hear preaching more become better believers. Amen. Because how? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Yeah, fear comes by hearing and hearing every other thing apart from the word of God. So if you want to, and fear is also the, the relative of unbelief. Fear, don't forget, I say unbelief, fear and doubt. Those are the things that keep people out of God's promise. But we are majoring on unbelief. Once you understand unbelief, you'll be able to take care of the others who might have time to take care of them. But let's deal with this principal one today. Is somebody getting blessed? Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 24. It says, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of what preaching. She knew what God has said, but she chose to believe something else. Wow. And unbelief, that unbelief led to death. It led to, you know, their death and they lost everything that God has for them. That will not be your portion Amen. in the name of Jesus. I said that will not be your portion in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. So anything, any thought, anything or any thought or anyone that comes to, even sometimes you are in your own, you know, because how do you know the presence of an, you know, of an evil spirit? It's true thoughts. Yep. True thoughts. You inject thoughts in your mind. You just see a thought that says, ah, you think you, this is how your year is going to be. I refuse it. I reject it. 
<laughs> God is going to crown this year for me with his goodness. You have to be alert, you know, alert, sensitive, awake, you know, fighting any unbelief that wants to penetrate your heart or your mind because is the that's how that's how it's going to keep you on rather than for you to wake up and pray and confess and call it and do whatever you need to do now you might just be uh relaxed not be doing anything and then the person will not receive mm. what the god has promised that will not be your portion amen. can i hear your amen? amen so what's the first thing that keeps the person out lack of, lack of knowledge number two amen. ignorance of the promise number three unbelief that results as a uh, that comes as a result of lack of persuasion. Lack of what? Persuasion. persuasion. Romans chapter four, from verse nineteen. You know, we, we we when we talk about Abraham, we had that in the church this morning. Abraham, God gave him a promise. Are you see here? Yes, sir. God gave him a promise, uh, and the Bible says <laughs> he staggered not. Yeah, okay, and be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet what the deadness of Sarah's womb. What is staggered not what at the promise of God, what true unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and what being fully what persuaded, fully persuaded, fully convinced that what God has promised, he was able also what to perform. So Unbelief due to lack of persuasion. Mm. When somebody is not fully persuaded, is not fully convinced. Oh, it sounds fantastic, but I'm not really convinced. <laughs> you can't sit on the fence. Yes, it's either you are persuaded or you are unpersuaded. It's either you are convinced or not convinced. It's either you are in or you are out. Amen. You have to be fully in with God. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Yeah. And he had reason. He had reason to be... Uh, to, to doubt, yeah. to have unbelief, but the Bible says he staggered not at the promise. It's, it's the promise. He didn't stagger. He didn't allow uh, his, which, which is what we're going to see, he didn't allow his human reasoning, logic, circumstances, whatever is happening around him, to affect his persuasion. He was fully persuaded that what he has promised, God will perform. You need Amen. to be fully persuaded Amen. that God will crown the year for you with his goodness. Amen. Somebody say, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. Oh, say like you are persuaded. Say, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. Yeah. That what God has promised is able to perform. Amen. You know, I think I was teaching on Wednesday. I said, somebody gave a definition of faith. It says, faith is learning to believe certain truth no matter what happens. Hello. Believing certain truths, no matter what, that's persuasion. Uh, it might not be looking like it, but I don't care. What I'm standing on is the promise of God. God will crown the year for me with his goodness. Amen. Yeah. No matter what it is, that's what Abraham, Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God. Oh, the year is running out. Oh, time is past. No. He staggered not. He was strong in faith. Father, I thank you. Yes, Lord. Confessing, declaring, Amen. proclaiming the goodness of God. Amen. That what God has promised, God is able to perform it. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Glory be to God.